What's up guys? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you three crazy masking tricks to learn in After Effects. And you just saw the first one. The second trick that I'm gonna show you in After Effects is actually one of my favorite, and I've never taught on it before. But before I teach you any of those tricks, I'm gonna teach you a quick masking hack that I like to call the split screen transition. It's raining like crazy here now in Brisbane, but guys, real quick, see these titles? They're actually not real, and you can make them right in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna talk about them in about 30 seconds. It's gonna come out of nowhere, so watch out. Time me. The split screen transition is actually pretty easy to do. Shoot the same object two times an identical distance from the camera in two different locations using one single object to seamlessly carry the shot from one scene to another scene. Now though, it's time to open up After Effects and import both your shots into your project window. Create a new composition by dragging one of the shots on the composition button. Place one shot on top of the other shot in the timeline window. Now bring down the opacity of the top clip by 50%. Make sure to align both shots by using the position and the scale parameters of each clip. Now click on the top clip, then click on the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle mask over the top clip. Now keyframe the top clip so that the mask animates down from the top. You do this by clicking on the stopwatch and animating the mask path parameter from one keyframe position at the beginning to the other keyframe position at the end. Now highlight both keyframes in the timeline. Next, right click on the highlighted keyframes and select keyframe assistant. Then go to easy ease. This is going to help in making a smooth transition. Now open up the graph editor. In the graph editor, select the keyframes and adjust the handles to create a smooth bezier curve. This will ensure that your mask's animation transitions smoothly, creating a seamless effect as it moves. Lastly, remember to click the motion blur button to add motion blur to the movement of the mask. Once you become more comfortable with masking, you can spruce it up a little bit, add a few more keyframes in there, and make the mask animation look even more beautiful like this. So about those titles, how about I give you access to these titles and 10,000 more for only $9. They look like this, 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 and this. Subscribe to Envato Elements using our channel's special $9 deal down in the description below. Signing up for Envato Elements really supports the channel and all of this free education that I wanna to give to you. I just really wanna start chatting with people that actually support what we're doing. So if you actually sign up for Elements, go over to my Instagram, it's Josh Olufemi, and then send me a DM that says simply Elements so we can hopefully start talking and I can learn a little bit more regarding how I can help you in your creative journey. Now I'm gonna show you how to add volumetric lighting to turn a boring clip into a captivating clip, chock full of depth. First, import your footage into After Effects. We're gonna import the warehouse footage and fog that we have downloaded from Envato Elements. Because Envato Elements doesn't only have thousands of title packs, they literally have any digital product or video asset that a video editor could ever dream of having. But more on the fog later. Then you're gonna create a new composition. Then you're gonna right click in the timeline window and select new and then select solid. Go to the color box, change it to white. Blind the white solid by clicking on the I button next to it on the timeline. We're doing this so that we can see what we're doing. Make sure you're clicked on the white solid in the timeline window. Now click on the pen tool and create the shape of a light beam on the blinded white solid layer extending from the roof to the floor. Feather the mask slightly I have my feather at 90 pixels. Now change the mask opacity to 30%. Now we're going to keyframe the mask path and create an animation between the beginning of the footage and the end of the footage. This will allow the light beam to stick in place as the footage plays through. Now press the stopwatch at the beginning of the footage, then scroll your playhead to the end of the footage, then create a second keyframe. Then adjust the mask points to where the beam needs to be placed at the end of the footage so that it appears to stay in place. All right, it's time to head over to the link in the description and download the ground fog from Envato Elements. If you are literally one of the thousands of Olufemi channel watchers who have already clicked the link in the description in the past and taken advantage of our $9 Envato Elements deal, then this is an easy free download at no extra charge. If you haven't yet to subscribe to Elements, then just go ahead and do it below. It takes like 60 seconds. After you download the fog file, bring the fog into the timeline. Click the toggle switches and modes button till you see the mode drop down. Now change the mode in front of fog to screen. This changes everything that's black 
on the clip to transparent so that the fog can be overlaid over the background. Click on the fog. Now click on the pen tool. Now draw a mask over the fog in the shape of the trench that is in the ground. This will allow the fog to seemingly stick in place as the footage plays through. Make sure to add a mask feather onto the fog. I have mine at around 120 pixels. Now adjust the mask opacity to make it realistic. I have mine at around 45. We want to make it appear as if there is only fog at the bottom of this trench. Now we're going to keyframe the mask path and create yet another animation between the beginning of the footage and the end of the footage. And that's it. Go over to File, then click Export, then Add to Render Queue. In the Output module, click on the blue, then click H.264 under Format, then click OK. In Output 2, click on the blue and give the file a name and output location on your computer. Then click Save. After that, click Render and you're done. All right guys, now I'm gonna finally show you how to walk over a building. First things first, you're gonna go find a building. Set your camera up at a really low angle so that there's enough sky on top of the building. This leaves room for everyone to see your soon to be monstrous giant body. Now walk in front of the camera and pretend to walk over the building, making sure to raise your legs as high as you can. After you've pretended to walk over the building, walk back a little bit and voila, that's all the footage you need. Now it's time to open up After Effects and import your footage. Now it's time to create a new composition by dragging that footage on the composition button. Let's name that composition everything. Duplicate your footage by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Go to the beginning of your footage before you walk into frame, then right click on your footage, go to time, then go to freeze frame. This creates a freeze frame of infinite length from the point of the clip that the playhead was on. Now stretch that frozen top clip over the entirety of the bottom clip. This is what pros call a clean plate. Basically footage of just the background. Now click on that clean plate and go over to the pen tool and add a mask around the top edge of the building that is to be stepped over. Now in the case of this footage, I wanted to create little subtracting masks in the small holes in the roof where I want to see the clip behind the clean plate. Go back to the pen tool now and create those little small masks, then make sure that they're all set to subtract. Now pre-comp this entire clean plate layer and name it clean plate. Now this is important, remember to press the move all attributes into new composition button before you pre-comp, then press OK. Now you're going to make two masks, one for each leg. Make sure that these two masks are on subtract. You're going to keyframe each mask so that they animate in right after the leg clears the top of the building. This is essentially cutting out the clean plate on the top and revealing the footage of you behind right when you want it to appear as if you are now in front of the building as opposed to still behind the building as you were before. Now if you want to add a little bit of camera shake as soon as you hit the ground, pre-comp everything again together, then add some keyframes to position. I increased the scale and made it to be 103 just so that I don't see any black edges. And that's it. Go over to File, then click Export, then Add to Render Queue. Again, in the Output module, click on the blue, then click H.264 under Format, then click OK. In Output 2, click on the blue and give the file a name and output location on your computer, then click Save. After that, click Render, and you're done. 